Hey everyone, I'm Chris, and welcome to another video in the new FPS modular firearm series. In this video, we're going to be having a look at the inventory system in Neo FPS, uh, so the different options available to you there, uh, along with adding items to your character for when you spawn, uh, inventory IDs in the database, and pickups and drops. So picking up things like ammunition and dropping your current weapon from your hands. Okay, so let's get started. First up, we'll have a look at the different inventory options available to you. So here I am in the inventory demo scene uh, with this starting inventory, which is the standard quick switch inventory. So this is like your Doom games, things like that, uh, where each, each weapon has a specific number assigned to it. These are fixed, um, and essentially all of the guns in the game will fit within this 1 to 0 range. Um, next up, we'll have a look at stacked. So if I come over here and hit this button, it'll load the stacked inventory scene. Okay, so stacked inventories are more like uh, Half-Life 2, for example. You've got more guns than will fit within that 1 to 0 range. So you stack multiple on one button. So here we have pistols on one of them. And we have rifles or rifle-like weapons on one of them as well. Uh, so you... Half-Life, for example, you also had explosives on one, and you'd have melee on one as well. And lastly, we'll have a look at the swappable inventory. So this is your Call of Duties, your Halos, things like that. You have a small number of slots, so we have one for melee, one for thrown weapons, and then we've got two slots for firearms. So we grab a firearm and it goes straight into slot number one. Grab another one, it goes into slot number two. Now from this point on, if we grab one, it replaces whichever one we have selected, or the last one that we had selected. So for example, if I hit one, go over to melee, grab a pistol, one will be swapped with the pistol. Okay, so this one allows you to essentially have an infinite number of guns or weapons within your game. Uh, and you can also limit the number that you can carry at any one time. It's, it's some kind of a more of a modern system that you would expect to see. Okay, so now that you know the options available, like currently there is no inventory system in Neo FPS that gives you full grid based or list based containers that you can browse in game. Uh, so you can't open up crates, pick things out of them, uh, change them around, things like that. Um, I'm looking at options for that coming soon, but essentially this is much more focused on your shooter type games. So adding uh, inventory items to your character. Okay, so exiting the scene. We have the demo scenes right here, inventory standard, stacked and swappable. And for each of those, we've got a character. Uh, stacked, swappable, and the standard one just uses the single player new FPS solo character. So this is in new FPS samples, single player prefabs, or for the inventory based ones, single player scenes, Feature Demos, Inventory. So if I have a look at the solo player character, you can see on the root here, uh, where are you? There we are. FPS Inventory Quick Switch. Uh, the options available on here are the item root. So this is where any ob objects that you pick up are gonna be placed in the hierarchy. We have the wieldable root scale. This uh, scales objects that you're holding. Uh, you won't be able to see the scale change, but it helps with things like not intersecting with uh, geometry. Uh, so that you can apply that to all of the objects uh, at once. The drop transform, this is when you hit drop uh, and you drop the item that you're holding in your hands where it will be spawned and it'll be spawned with this velocity. So then we have the quick switch specific settings here. So this is the slot count and then what happens if you pick up uh, a duplicate object or an object with duplicate IDs. Um, so default behavior is to reject the object you're trying to pick up. You can also destroy the old object or drop the old object. Underneath that, we have the starting state. So the backup item is your hands. Essentially, if you were to drop all of the items in the quick slots, you will be left just with your backup item. Also, if you hit the holster button, which defaults to H, it will uh, switch to your hands and then hitting it again will switch to whatever you were holding before you, you holstered. Um, 
The starting items will be added to your inventory uh, when the character spawned. Um, so you, for example, here we have all the different ammo types, and then we have one of each of the different guns. Uh, starting slot choice. So this is um, when you start, which item selected. So you can go ascending order, descending order, or in this case, custom. So I've, I've specified by priority uh, which of the items you're going to pick if you've got them in your inventory. So here, five is assault rifle, shotgun, sniper rifle, revolver, pistol, grenade launcher, baton, blah, blah, blah. So essentially, though, in that order, in that, in that order of preference, is the item that you will select when you first start up. Okay, so that's the quick switch one. Let's have a look at the stacked one. So here's the stacked inventory. Essentially, all of the uh, properties are the same, apart from the stacked inventory section here. So we have the same duplicate behavior, reject. We also have a stack count that you can set. So this is essentially the same as the quick slot count, but for the number of stacks. And then the swappable inventory, again, similar. The difference here is you get to select each of the different categories and you can say how many of each of those different categories you have. So we've got two firearms, one melee, one thrown. The categories themselves are a generated constant. Um, now what that means is that it's an actual code enum, uh, but there is a way to uh, modify that in here. So um, if I open tools, new FPS, new FPS hub, this gives the, uh, the hub with the quick starts and all things like that. So here we have it, the generated constants. Uh, so this is under managers, generated constants. Um, and within here, the, each of these is a set of constants that are available in code uh, and also available in dropdown. So for example, here we have the swap action dropdown, same kind of thing. Yeah, so it provides an inspector style dropdown. And if we go through, we can find, where is it? FPS swappable category. So here you can add your own categories, Bob. If I was then to hit uh, generate, that would generate the script to go with that. And all of a sudden here you would get Bob would appear. Uh, let's not do that though. And yeah, so that's uh, expanding the swappable inventory. We've had a look at one way to add items to the character on start. There is one other way, which is incredibly useful. So if we go back to the uh, demo scene section here, we can also create new FPS inventory loadout. Now this asset is similar to that starting items list on the inventory component. Essentially, we can just drop uh, weapons in here. So for this one, we need swappable. We'll just find some of those. Revolver and... Oops. Shotgun, that's fine. Now if I open up the demo inventory scene here, then we have the spawner, which is also this prefab here. One of the options on here is we have the player, we have the character, we have loadout. So that we can drop this loadout in. And if we now hit play, then we start with the items that we had in the loadout. So that's uh, the different options available. That's how you choose your starting items. Now, one of the other important concepts is uh, on the items themselves, let's just grab one of these again. So swappable assault rifle, for example. If we look on here, we can find somewhere FPS inventory wieldable swappable. This is the inventory item component. So this is what allows you to add this object to your inventory. This is also uh, a wieldable item. So this is one that you can uh, hold in your hands and you can interact with. So melee weapons, thrown weapons, firearms, tools. And there's two types of these. There is the FPS inventory wieldable swappable. And there is also the FPS inventory wieldable. So for the quick switch inventory and the stacked inventory, this is the one you want to use. And this gives you a quick slot here. So this quick slot um, is equivalent to your keyboard number. Uh, however, it is array based, so it starts at zero. It's a little bit finicky just to get your head around, but essentially take the keyboard number, subtract one, that's the quick slot um, for quick switch. 
for the stacked inventory, essentially you're talking about 10 potential weapons per stack. So 0 to 9 is your first stack, uh, 10 to 19 is your second stack, 20 to 29 is your third stack, and so on and so forth. The 0, 10, 20, that's your which stack you're in. The 0 to 9 within that is the, uh, the priority within that list that the weapon will appear. So if I look at the stacked uh, shotgun, for example, 21, whereas the stacked assault rifle, 20. Uh, and they appeared within the same list. Quick slot numbers need to be unique per gun. So what that means is that if you have two different guns, say a shotgun and a pistol, and they both have the same quick slot, if you pick up the second one uh, and it's got a unique ID, so you can actually pick it up, then it will not be added to your quick slots. So make sure that if you're planning to have a large number of weapons or items, you use the stacked or the swappable inventory system. If we go back to the swappable, uh, this one's a little bit different. This has on it the category. So it's the one difference. Essentially, you just say, am I a firearm, melee a throne? Or if we had ever added that Bob category, then that would appear in this drop down as well. So the other important thing about these uh, items, these item or wieldable components, is the inventory ID. This is a unique identifier for every different object that you can pick up. If you're already holding an item with that specific ID, then it's considered a duplicate if you try to pick up another one. So the default is you reject that new item uh, and you just won't pick it up. Uh, there's various other options as we saw earlier. But Essentially, what it means is that for every different type of object, you want to create a different ID. Uh, and the way that we do this is fairly flexible now. So if we open up Tools, New FPS, New FPS Hub, and then back to Managers, we have here the Inventory Database. So the Inventory Database holds all of the different IDs that you can use. Uh, at the top of the list here is the scripted constants. So this is like the the category here, this is a generated script. So each of the different ones here can be referenced from code by name, um, but they are also completely fixed. We also have these inventory tables to let you specify names. Um, you can sort them, you can change the names of them and that will propagate through to the different items. Uh, and you can do things like uh, you can duplicate the entry, creating a new one with the same name as a starting point, but with a new ID. You can remove the selected entry, or you can copy the ID for debugging and stuff like that. So this is uh, all the different demo items here that we have for new FPS. And then I've created another table for the, uh, for the tutorials. Um, now the best practice for your own project is to create a table specifically. And the way that you do that is dead simple. Create Neo FPS uh, from the project view, create Neo FPS inventory database table. So, this new table, you can give it a name. So, test table. And then up at the top here, we have a little warning saying this database table is not currently registered with the inventory. So, if we just hit register, then there we go. Popped up in the inventory database here. And if we select it, this is our new table. Uh, so from here, or from the actual table itself at this point, we can add whatever we want. Demo gun. Add new entry, and this appears with a unique ID. And what this means is that we can go back to our weapon. So here are you, you are assault rifle swappable. Go to the inventory, and in the inventory ID, if I click on this, this opens up the inventory database browser. So we have test table up at the top here, and then you demo gun. So double clicking that, we'll add it. Um, the reason that you want to create your own inventory database table is to prevent clashes when new FPS is updated, for example. If I was to add new, uh, new guns, new items, then I don't want you grabbing an update to new FPS and finding that the inventory table from the new FPS samples is overwriting the different things that you'd added to it. So the best thing you can do is add your own table. Uh, worst case in the update is that your table will be removed from the database. So then you just need to hit that button up top again. Yeah, anyway, so 
with the assault rifle here, the other thing that we can do is from clicking this again and opening up the inventory database browser, uh, down at the bottom here, we have a section called new entry. So if we click this drop down, this is all the different tables that we can modify. So we can go to that test table that we had, create something else, new gun, and then hit add new entry. And this new one appears here and is also selected on the weapon itself. So it's dead easy to add new keys as you need them for the different objects. Just make sure that you keep track of the table. Make sure that you use a consistent naming convention. You can come back and change it. So new gun two, for example, in here, and then this will change to be reflected here. So it is tied by ID, it's not done by string. So you don't need to worry about that. And yeah, just make sure that you have a unique one for each object and then you'll be able to add all of these different ones to your inventory. Okay, so that's the, uh, the actual inventory items. Now let's have a look at pickups and drops. So let's have a look at our tutorial spawner character. Uh, where are you? There's the character. I know it's the loadout, wasn't it? So here we have revolver and shotgun. So if I just select this here and we look at the inventory wieldable swappable again, the inventory component, then you'll see in here um, one property called drop object. So this is the pickup for a uh, for the weapon that's dropped when you when you drop it. So for example, if I hit play here, I'll load up, switch to the shotgun, um, now I hit G, we'll drop it on the floor. So this is a shotgun pickup. Uh, and then if we hold E, we'll pick it back up again. Now there's a separate system for just picking up objects uh, and for firearm drops. And the reason for that is that the firearms have one little extra feature, which is if, for example, we fire off a few rounds, we drop it there, and then we pick it up again, it still has the same number of rounds left in the chamber. You can't, uh, you can't fire off half your ammo, drop your gun and pick it back up to essentially replenish all the ammo that you had. So how exactly do you create inventory item pickups? Well, the easiest way to do that now is... Uh, opening up the new FPS hub again, and there is a section in here called Wizards. So previously we looked at the modular firearm wizard for creating uh, firearms, but there is also a section for pickups. So the wizard comes with a number of demo templates uh, using the art assets uh, available within the FPS just to show off uh, what you can do. So for example here we have an ammo crate, a static multi-pickup object containing a range of ammo items, so this is the crates that we have in the scene where you walk up, you use them and you pick up, you replenish all of your ammo. We have a contact armor pickup and an interactive armor pickup. So the armor system in Neo FPS just checks in your inventory for an inventory item with the armor ID attached to it. And that's how it works out how much armor you have remaining on your character. We have a pistol firearm drop. So like we're looking at, this is one that sorts out the ammo count as well as being a, a pickup for the weapon itself. We have health pack pickups, a uh, contact one, an interactive one. We have shield booster pickups, contact and interactive. And we have a wieldable baton pickup. So like the firearm one, only obviously we don't have to worry about ammo or anything like that. So first up, let's have a look at the pistol. So if I start from template here, uh, and we just run through this quickly. We have the prefab name, so pistol. Auto prefix will add um, a naming convention, standardized naming to the beginning of that. Uh, overwrite will overwrite any uh, existing pre prefabs. We select the pickup type. So this is your modular firearm pickup drop. We have the wieldable items like the baton, inventory, health, multi inventory, so on and so forth. Then we have tap or hold. So since the modular firearm drops are always interactive, you don't have contact-based ones, um, you essentially have the option of, do you want to hit E and instantly pick it up, or do you want to hold E to pick it up? And this is the hold duration. So next up, this is the actual prefab that we want to pick up. So this one is a pistol. Um, so this is the first person weapon. Um, add to gun, if you have this clicked, then when we actually create this uh, prefab using the wizard, then it will modify this weapon prefab here 
and connect it via that drop object to the to the new prefab. Uh, ammo type, we have a shared ammo type object. So when the uh, ammo is taken from the gun, it will be this type. Next up, we get to choose the display object. So mesh allows you to select an individual mesh from within the FBX. Model is the entire FBX prefab. And then prefab is just any old prefab in the project folder that you want to use. So in this case, we have a model prefab. And we are pointing at this uh, weapon low pistol. Let's see, can I open? And you get this weapon low pistol here. This is the one. Next up for the highlight, we get to pick how it's highlighted. Do we want no highlight? So you just you just hit use on it. There's no uh, indication that it's interactive. Do you want the corner markers? So that's uh, what I use in the new FPS demo samples. Or do you want to use a material based highlight? This requires a specific type of shader, which adds interesting uh, lighting effects uh, and sheen to the object to demonstrate that it's interactable. Next up, within the interaction uh, tooltip, we have the name and then the action. So this is the, the verb, what do you do to the object? So pick up. And then we have the ammo mesh. So in this case, um, within this model prefab, if we click here, this opens up the hierarchy browser. So this is everything within that prefab. And we can pick an object here, maglo, which is the actual magazine. So the firearm pickups have a separate system, a contact pickup for the actual ammo, and then an interactive pickup for the weapon itself. So if you were to just walk over a load of guns, you'll pick up all of the ammo in them, but you actually have to interact with one to take the weapon itself. Uh, next up, quite obviously, we have the uh, pickup audio, the audio clip that's played when you actually pick the item up, and the ammo audio. So when you actually walk over the ammunition and pick that up, this is the ammo that's played there. And then we have physics. Um, so because this is a firearm drop that you actually throw away from you, uh, this has a rigid body physics, so a massive one, collider type of box, uh, so you can choose from all these different ones, and then a surface material. So this is just the uh, the audio and the visual effects if it gets hit, for example. And that's that. Once you've created your, uh, once you've set up your uh, pickup, you can save it as a template if you like, uh, so that you can use the same template again for variants, or you can just create the item here and it will uh, it will spit it out. So if I just open up the new FPS tutorial, demo scene, select folder, there we go. Spat out this uh, weapon pickup pistol. So this has the uh, ammo pickup, the render geometry, uh, all the different parts. And then on the root of it, we've got the rigid body for the physics. We've got the audio source for playing the audio as you pick it up. Uh, simple surface for impact and collisions. We've got a uh, box collider for the uh, weapon itself. I have an interactive pickup script, which picks up this, uh, uh, the root here, which picks up this firearm. We have the modular firearm drop, which is the thing that, uh, which is the thing that initializes the ammunition as you drop it from your, from your inventory. Uh, so this also, uh, handles the ammo pickup separately to the weapon pickup itself. We've got the corner markers, which highlight it in the scene. And then we have finally this Neo serialized game object, which is used to save the, uh, the position and things like that. So since it's a rigid body and it can move around the scene, when you hit save and then load later, you want the position of it to have changed. So there we go. That's everything required for the, for the pistol. Let's go back to the uh, hub to look at the other templates. Boom. Next up, have, let's have a look at the contact armor pickup. So as I said earlier, this is essentially just a simple inventory item pickup. Um, Cause literally all armor is, is an item in your inventory. The armor based damage handlers do all of the actual system behind the armor. They just check that item in your inventory to see how much armor you have. Inventory item pickups, you get the choice between interactive or contact based. So since the firearm drop was interactive, we'll look at contact based with this one. 
Uh, we then have the inventory item that we want to pick up, so armor body. And if we look on here, this has the inventory ID, armor body, which is how the, uh, the armor system uh, detects it. So spawn on awake means that as soon as this pickup wakes up within the scene, it will spawn the, uh, the armor item within it for you to collect. And then consume result is what happens when you pick up the item. In this case, it destroys the pickup. You could also disable the pickup so that from scripts, you will be able to reset it later, or you can set it to respawn. So this means that it will disable the render geometry and the trigger colliders, uh, and then it will wait um, a set period of time, and then it will respawn the pickup. Back to the display object type, we've got mesh again for this one. So this is the render mesh. Um, we have the material to use, the audio that happens when you pick it up. And in this case, we're creating a static pickup. So it has no physics. It's just an object in the scene. So if we create that, uh, it gives us the summary of all the different settings that we have. And we hit create item, stick it in that demo scene folder again. And there's our uh, armor pickup. Looking at the, uh, the object itself, we have an inventory item pickup, a sphere collider, a trigger based sphere collider. So the object is on the trigger zones layer. Then we have a pickup trigger zone. This captures the trigger enter message and then basically uses that to set off the inventory item pickup. So, yeah, that's that one. Uh, next up, let's reset that and look at one of the other templates. Uh, so the ammo crate, this one here, if we go for that, start from template. So this one is a multi-item pickup. So this is a, an interactive object in this case. Uh, uh, you don't have a contact version of this, which contains a number of inventory items to pick up. So in this case, we want to instantly interact with it the second we hit use. Uh, these are all the different items that we want to pick up when we do that. Replenish means that when you consume one of these items, it will be reset and replaced. So it's not a finite amount of each, each one in there. Uh, display object type. Again, we've gone with mesh. So the render mesh is this ammo crate. Um, the material is the demo facility palette. Highlight is the corner markers, which is the default for the demo scenes. So tooltip name, ammo crate, pick up the items within it, the audio. And then here we have static physics. So this is a physical object in the scene that your character will uh, bump into, walk over, but it's not dynamic. Um, it's not rigid body based. Uh, and in this case, collider type, we've gone for a convex mesh, which is this one right here. So this is fitted to that same pickup uh, and given it this, the gadget surface material. So if you were to shoot it, you will get sparks and a specific sound to go with that. And that's that. So the summary of all the different settings. And then if we create item, stick it in that same scene again. And here we go. So that set it up with all the different uh, interaction colliders, the physics collider. And then on the root of here, we've got uh, detail and rough physics for shooting versus walking over. We have the interactive multi pickup uh, component, which has all those different items on it uh, with the, the name, the verb. Uh, and then we have the corner markers. Yeah, so that's that. Last one to look at. There's a quite simple one, which is the, the wieldable pickup. So this is very similar to the firearm pickup, the only difference being it doesn't have the ammunition. So instead of firearm drop, we have wieldable item drop. So hold to interact with. This is the actual prefab that we're picking up. Uh, add to wieldable. Again, if you have that ticked, then it will modify this, pick up, this first person weapon so that it's pointing at this drop that we're creating. Um, the mesh, display type, and material, the corner markers, the audio, everything else is the same as with the firearms. So if we complete that, create item, and stick it in that folder. Where is it? There it is. Then we have the button.
So there we go. That's how you uh, create all the different pickups. Um, the wizard makes the job a lot easier with stuff like that. Um, whereas previously you would have been adding the components yourself and just trying to work out how to do it, looking at the documentation. Uh, I should point out that all of these different uh, components do have documentation, so you can click on the help and it will take you straight to that if you wanted to, but the wizard just walks you through all the different properties. Uh, so there is one last thing to look at with the inventory system, and that is ammo. So ammo is a specific type of inventory object which you can create in your project folder using create, new FPS, inventory, ammo type. It's dead simple. It is just an inventory ID. Uh, so we give it an ID like Let's go for our test table, new ammo, add new entry, give it that. Printable name is what appears on your HUD as you're playing. So ammo, and then the maximum quantity that you can have at any one time in your inventory. So the actual inventory item that you pick up and that you store in your inventory is essentially just um, an object with the FPS inventory ammo component attached to it, um, given a number, and then pointing at that ammo type that we created. Um, the other thing that I've added here is a Neo Serialized Game Object. Now what this means is that if you were to save the game, then the number here will essentially be saved with your character. So if this is in your character's inventory, and you hit save and then you hit load, you will have the correct amount of this ammunition. Uh, and that's it. That's literally the, all that's required to hold ammunition. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful and gave you a good understanding of how the inventories work and how to create items, uh, create IDs, uh, create pickups that you can use in uh, your own projects. So as usual, uh, hop on the Discord, give me any feedback that you have, any questions, things like that. Uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.